This is Twit. As early as a full two years ago, any websites that were keeping up with the latest and greatest and therefore incorporated the then 1.0.1 version of OpenSSL have from then or from whenever they did until yesterday and hopefully not today or tomorrow because this news w was flashed like wildfire for, for up to this two years and hopefully ending or ended now, there has been a vulnerability present which the, the internet community at large has been completely unaware of, which allows an attacker to exfiltrate up to 24K of memory that was meant to be private. Memory in the server, and it is by bidirectional exploit. So if the client had this, then you something you connected to could come and get memory from you as well. Um, but that's not where we're focused. We're, we're focused on the server because the guys who found the problem attacked themselves. They attacked their own servers and saw what this 64K block contained. It's going to vary from, from attempt to attempt. There's no control over it. You like a buffer overflow, you, you get what you get. You get what's there. But unfortunately, 64K is a lot of memory, and they found their server certificate in that 64K and other critical, crucial private information, passwords, and, and so forth. And in fact, Dan Gooden of Ars Technica has some nice coverage, which I'll share in a second. But uh, the, the Tor project that is, of course, concerned about this, their, their systems are largely based on, on open SSL uh, protocol as a, a wrapper for what they do. Uh, they immediately blogged about this last night. And they said, a new open SSL vulnerability on 101 through 101F is out today, which can be used to reveal memory to a connected client or server. If you're using an older open SSL version, you're safe. Meaning if you're, if you never went to 1.0.1, you know, even recently, uh, 0 0.9.8 had been like a, still maintained in parallel with the, you know, so, so, so the, the version 0 0.9.8 track was, was, was being kept up in parallel with the, with the version 1.0.1 and so forth track. So many people may have stayed safe. And in fact, we have some numbers about that that I'll share because it's not as bad as the 66% of the internet that the early reports have, have said. It turns out that many fewer servers, for whatever reason, probably because they weren't using the latest version, did have this extension exposed and, and therefore vulnerable. Tor, the Tor blog continues, note that this bug affects way more programs than just Tor. Expect everybody who runs an HTTPS web server to be scrambling today. For example, and I will talk about LastPass because they did scramble already and have a great blog about, out about, about the consequences to them. If you need strong anonymity, says Tor, or privacy on the Internet, you might want to stay away from the Internet entirely for the next few days while things settle. Wow. And sadly, yes, sadly, that's good advice. And I'll explain why. Because note that this, and, and we'll come back to it, but this is not like the typical website loses 100,000 usernames and passwords where suddenly, without you doing anything, you're now vulnerable. Remember that th th this, is, this is a server or server's credentials may have been taken, which means 
First of all, if they weren't using perfect forward secrecy and they and someone had archives of their traffic, then that past traffic could be decrypted. We've covered that in detail in previous podcasts. So there's one problem. But the the maybe the more relevant problem, assuming you don't have archives of the past, is that with a server's credentials, you could you could impersonate the server. You would be you could do a man in the middle attack, or if you could, for example, somehow get the user to go to the wrong IP, like by changing their host's file in their machine, or by somehow poisoning their access to DNS. We've seen routers, uh, home routers, whose DNS has been repointed. That would redirect them to a fake DNS server so that their browser would think they were at Amazon.com, but in fact, they're somewhere entirely different. Yet, with a spoofed certificate, I mean, with, a, with, a, with a valid certificate for Amazon.com, their browser wouldn't know any better. So... So the point is that it's it's connections we make now, connections we make to sites that may have been compromised going forward that we need to worry about. And so that also tells us that proper remediation for this is revocation of any cert any the, the the revocation of the certificates of any site that may have had its certificate stolen during this two-year window or however long the window was because we need the old certificate to be to be revoked for use in our browsers and that requires that browsers check revocation which most don't by default